So let's look at what that work will look like as we move on to number four. Now you're not adding and subtracting, you're multiplying these fractions. This is a lot of what you did in lesson number 23. So you wanna multiply as shown and draw a number line to support your answer. I already started filling this in a little bit so I can just show you how that thinking works. So four B is the one we're gonna look at for your exit tickets. We have six times one half. Now we know that multiplication and addition go hand in hand as multiplication is that repeated addition process, right? Three times two is saying three groups of size two or three copies of size two. The same process works here. We have six copies of size one half. So when I go on and I add one half six times, that's basically the same as doing this. Repeated addition and multiplication go hand in hand. Then as I look at these, I notice that I can group these halves together to create holes. Two halves plus two halves plus two halves. When I create that new multiplication sentence, I have three times two halves. Now we know that two halves is equivalent to one whole. That gets me my product of three. When I look at my number line, I also recognize that pattern as well. Six copies of size one half is just repeatedly adding one half. So I went ahead and I partitioned my number line, and then I partitioned each one whole into two halves. And I added on each half six times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And that showed me once again an example of why my product of three is accurate. So when we look at posters that are falling down, 5B. It's asking you to do the same work. It's just using a different terminology. It's exposing you to another way to say it so that you understand that process more and how you could be exposed to multiplying fractions. So it wants you to multiply, right? The product is a mixed number and draw a number line. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in a format that makes a little bit more sense to me. So I have seven copies of one half. I'm doing seven times one half, okay? So when we learned from the last one, we're kind of thinking about, well, how many halves can I add together to kind of get to that seven copies, that seven times? So I'm thinking, okay, well, if I do seven divided by two, if I split it in half, it's not gonna be equal. So I'm realizing, okay, there might be a little bit remaining. I might have something else I need to work with. So if I do one half plus one half over and over again, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven there. Then once again, I think about, well, here's a hole, here's a hole, here's a hole, and I have that one half remaining. So I'm gonna work through this on a number line right away. So zero, one, two, three, four, and I have one for five. I'm gonna partition these in half. And then I'm going to start working. So, what happened one half? I can make one jump here. One half and one half again. That's another jump. One half and one half again, that's three, right? Seven times one half is the same as doing one, two, three times two halves plus one half. Three times two halves is three. Then I have that one half remaining to get me a product of three and a half. Okay, so everything you're doing is leading you up to understanding this process of repeated um, addition and its connection to that multiplica multiplication. So there are quicker ways to do this, right? You can think about splitting that seven and a half and going, hmm, well three times two is six, so that gets me close and then I have that other half to go. So there are other ways to do it, but this is what your visuals and your thinking should reflect.